Hey, Math 31, I had a question coming out of section 9.1, number 25, and we're being asked to find an explicit formula for each of these terms. So that means that I somehow want to map the number 1 to 1. I want to map the number 2 to 1 half. I want to map the number 3 to 1 fourth, and then so on and so forth. So if I can figure out what this formula is, I can write my explicit term. Now, before I get going, the one thing that I notice is that I have alternating positive and, and negative signs. So I'm just gonna keep that in my back pocket, right? I have an alternator that needs to be present. I always say that, it always makes me think of the terminator. But when I look at this, okay, we'll, we'll keep in mind the alternator, but when I look at this, I see these denominators, these fractions, right? And they're powers of two. This is two to, the, ooh, let me undo that. This is two to the first. This is two squared. This is two cubed. This is two to the fourth. So what I do start to notice is that I want five to get mapped to one fewer powers of two, right? This five gets to mapped to two to the fourth. Four gets mapped to two cubed. Three gets mapped to two squared. So I'm seeing that this exponent on this power of two, it should be one less than whatever whatever my, um, I, I would say whatever term in my sequence we're, we're looking at. All right, and then I think about, well, how do I get any power to be one. How do I get one to map to one? Well, we've done that. That's two to the zero. So I just see these, these terms in my sequence as powers of two, or I really fractions where the denominators are powers of two. So if I start to piece this together, I'm going to say a sub n. I'm going to leave the numerator constant, and then I'm going to put a two to the n here. And let's just test that out because I want you to see it not work initially. Because if I do a sub one, that would be 1 over 2 to the 1, right? a sub 2 will be 1 over 2 squared. And I could keep on going. Let me just write one more so we see it. Oops, there's the equal sign. 1 over 2 cubed. So you see that this is 1 half. This one here is 1 fourth. This one here is 1 eighth. So it's just a little too too high, right? Because I don't want a sub 1 to be 1 half. I, don't, I want a sub 2 to be 1 half. That was the mapping we wanted, right? a sub 2 over here will get mapped to, well, technically negative one half. And as I mentioned before, if we look at those powers, they're one less than this index here on my term. So really what I wanna do is make this one over two to the n minus one. And let, let me erase this and now let's try this again and see if this works a little better. Now if I did a sub one, it'd be one over two to the one minus one, which is one over two to the zero, which is one, great. And if I did, I'll put a little divider here. Actually, let me erase the fact that I have an alternator just so I have some room to work this. I'll put alternator over here. Okay, so now let's try a sub two. This would be one over two to the two minus one. Well, that would be one over two, and that's also good. And let's try a sub three. a sub three would be one over two to the three minus one, which would be one over two squared, which would be one fourth. Awesome. So you start to see here, right, that a sub 1 got mapped to 1. That's a good thing. a sub 2 got mapped to 1 half. That's a good thing. a sub 3 got mapped to 1 fourth. That's a good thing if we look at the original, um, the original problem. And sure enough, if I did a sub 4, it would get mapped to 1 eighth. a sub 5 would get mapped to 1 16th. The only thing we still need to figure out is this alternator. So let, let's take a look at where we are right now. So let me regroup. I have a sub n is equal to 1 over 2 to the n minus 1. Now, a lot of times that will be written as 1 half to the n minus 1. And if you're thinking, well, how are those two things the same? Well, you do have this power up here, and you're allowed to distribute powers to a fraction because there's only division in there. You can actually distribute exponents to numerators and denominators as long as whatever, or you can, I should say, you can distribute this exponent here inside the parentheses as long as whatever's in this parentheses only has multiplication or division in it. And it does, so we're good to go. So I could rewrite this as one to the n minus one over two to the n minus one, but one to the n minus one is just one, and we get back to where we started. So I just want you to see that these two expressions are the same thing. I think sometimes when we see them, we don't realize that. All right, so the next thing I gotta figure out is how the alternator is gonna work. So again, if I regroup, I'm gonna leave this as a sub n. I'll write this as one half to the n minus one. Now, if I look over here, and let me re get a new color here. 
This first term needs to be positive. The second term needs to be negative. So let's just test this out. This is how I do it. I'll, I'll put a negative in here initially and see if it works. So if I want to do a sub 1, I don't know why that little triangle pops in sometimes. Sorry, let me put the negative back in and erase this triangle thing. All right, so if I want to do a sub 1, this would be neg negative 1 half to the 1 minus 1, which would be negative 1 half to the zero, which would be one. So that checks out for right now. Let me put a little division or divider here. Let's try a sub two. A sub two would be negative one half to the n minus one, oops, excuse me, to the two minus one. And let's see what we have here. So we have negative one half to the one, which is negative one half, which is checking out. So, so there we go. So I can actually just put the negative inside the parentheses right there. And that's why we have this a sub n is negative one half to the n minus one. And just as a little side note, let me, let me extend this just a bit. If your sequence, let's say it went the other order. Let's say it went negative one and then it went, let me do positive one half, negative one fourth. What would it be? Positive one eighth and negative one sixteenth. If this had happened, right, then our sequence would have been slightly different. So I would have tried a sub n. I still would have wanted the 1 half to the n minus 1, but I would have needed the alternator just separate. All right, I, I actually wrote the alternator separately here, but if, if we were doing this sequence now, my alternator would be negative 1 to the n because that would trip up a negative number first, right? If I did a sub 1 here, this would be 1 half to the 1 minus 1 times negative 1 to the 1. Well, this would be 1 half raised to the 0 times negative 1. This is 1 times negative 1, which is negative 1. So that's how I could get this term to match up as long as I had that alternator. All right, so there's number 25. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.